Sutra. It is because he desires to totally know profound esoteric understandings, understanding of expedient methods, discriminating understandings, spontaneous understandings, understandings which arise in accordance with cause, understandings which arise according to conditions, and the net of all understandings, totally without remainder, that he brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Commentary It is because he desires to totally know profound esoteric understandings. The Bodhisattva who brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi wishes to know profound esoteric understandings. What are profound understandings? True and actual understandings are not easy to understand, so they are called profound and esoteric. He thoroughly knows the ground and origin of dharmas. He understands what dharmas ultimately are. Understanding of expedient methods refers to understanding good, clever expedient methods in accordance with the time one does what is fitting, in accordance with the affair one does what is fitting, in accordance with the place one does what is fitting and in accordance with the person one does what is fitting. He uses this kind of wisdom of provisional, clever, expedient methods. Discriminating understandings is minutely analyzing all principles. Spontaneous understandings means very naturally understanding. Understandings which arise in accordance with causes means according with Various causes there arise all kinds of understandings. The Bodhisattva wishes to obtain the understandings which arise according to conditions, the complex causal conditions of things, and the net of all understandings totally without remainder. He wishes to comprehend all understandings which are like a net. If you understand one of them, you understand all of them. If there are those which you don't understand, then you are entangled within the net and are forever unable to come out of the net. Totally without remainder means she understands them completely and exhaustively without exception. It is for the reasons above that he brings forth the mind for Nutara Samyak Sambodhi, the expansive inexhaustible resolve for unsurpassed enlightenment. Sutra, disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, suppose there is a person who within a single thought moment is able to know all the different rules of all living beings in countless world systems in the East. In thought after thought like this, he passes through a Sankhya compass Suppose there is a second person who, within a single thought moment, is able to know all the different rules which the person before knew in thought after thought for a Samkhya compass. In the same way, it stands this until it reaches to a tenth person in the south, west, and north. The four intermediaries above and below, it is also like this. Disciple of the Buddha, the boundaries of all the different rules of all the living beings in these world systems in the ten directions can be known. But no one is able to know the boundaries of the merit and virtue and good rules of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Anusara Samyak Sambodhi. Commentary Disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, don't talk about it because I have another analogy. Suppose there is a person, basically there isn't such a person, but let's suppose that there is, who within a single thought moment, within the space of a single thought, is able to know all the different rules of all living beings in countless world systems in the East. He is able to know the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind, all of the differences of their faculties. In thought after thought like this, in every thought in this way, he passes through a Samkhya compass. He passes through as 
long as a uh, longer time as immeasurable numbers of compass and suppose there is a second person who within a single thought moment is able to know all the different rules which the person before knew in thought after thought for a sam your compass he know and can comprehend completely all the different faculties in each passing thought throughout a sam your compass in the same way extend this until it reaches to a tenth person in the south west and north the four intermediaries above and below it is also like this disciple of the buddha all of disciples of the buddha the boundaries of all the different rules of all the living beings in these world systems in the ten directions all these living beings different faculties can be known they can be known in detail but no one is able to know the boundaries of the merit and virtue and good rules of the bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samya Sambuddhi. The mind for the unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment. No one is able to know the boundaries, that is, how great that limit ultimately is. Sutra, why is this? It is because the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. It is only for the sake of knowing all the rules of the living beings in those worlds that he brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. Commentary The Bodhisattva does not fix a limit or measure on himself. The text says, Why is this? What is the reason for this? Doesn't anybody know? It is because the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit on himself, but it is only for the sake of knowing all the rules of the living beings in those worlds. It is because he wants to know all the many world systems and all of the root natures of the living beings therein, that he brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, for the unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment. Sutra, it is for the sake of exhaustively knowing within all world systems, all the various different rules of all living beings, and speaking broadly, it is because he desires to exhaustively know, up to and including the net of all rules that he brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, Suppose there is a person who, in a single thought moment, is able to know all the various desires and pleasures of all the living beings in countless world systems in the East. In thought after thought like this, he exhausts a Samkhya compass. In succession, it stands this until it reaches to a tenth person. In the south, west, and north, the four intermediaries above and below. It is also the same way. The limits of the desires and pleasures of all these living beings in the ten directions can be known, but no one is able to know the limits of the merit and virtue and good rules of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Commentary Disciple of the Buddha Putting this analogy aside, don't talk about it because I have another analogy. Suppose there is a person, basically there isn't such a person, but let's suppose there is, who within a single thought moment, within the space of single thought, is able to know all the different rules of all living beings in countless world systems in the East. He is able to know all living beings' rules, that is, their eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind all of the differences of their faculties in thought after thought like this in every thought in this way he passes through a samkhya yak compass and suppose there is a second person who within a single thought moment is able to know all the different rules which the person before knew in thought after thought for a samkhya yak compass he knows and can comprehend completely all the different faculties in each passing thought throughout a Samkhya compass. In the same way, it stands this until it reaches to a tenth person. In the south, west, and north, the four intermediaries above and below, it is also like this. 
disciple of the Buddha, all of you disciple of the Buddha, the boundaries of all the different rules of all the living beings in these world systems in the ten directions, all these living beings different faculties can be known. They can be known in detail, but no one is able to know the boundaries of the merit and virtue and good rules of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi. The mind for the unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment. No one is able to know the boundaries, that is, how great that limit ultimately is. Sutra Why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva does not limit himself. He brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi only for the sake of knowing all of those living beings' desires and pleasures. It is for the sake of exhaustively knowing all the various desires and pleasures of all living beings in all world systems. And speaking extensively, it is because he desires to exhaustively know up to and including the net of all desires and pleasures that he brings forth the mind for Nutsarasam Myaksambuddhi. Disciples of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, suppose there is a person who within a single thought moment is able to know all the various disparate methods of the living beings in countless world systems in the East. In succession, extend this until it reaches to a tenth person in the South, West and North, the four intermediaries above and below. It is also like this. Commentary. Why is this? What is the reason that no one is able to know their limit? The Bodhisattva has no disciple of the Buddha. You ought to know. The Bodhisattva does not limit himself. The Bodhisattva has no fixed dharma. He has no fixed limit, no fixed sphere. He brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi only for the sake of knowing all of those living beings' desires and pleasures. It is for the sake of exhaustively knowing all the various desires and pleasures of all living beings in all world systems. And speaking extensively, it is because he desires to exhaustively know up to and including the net of all desires and pleasures that he brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi. He brings forth the body mind because he desires to completely know the let the net of all desires and pleasures. So he brings forth the mind for the pleasures. So he brings forth the mind for the unsurpassed right and equal, putting this analogy aside. Enlightenment. All of you disciple of the Buddha, Jama Wisdom says. Putting this analogy aside, now let's not speak of this analogy anymore. We will take up another analogy. Basically, there isn't such a person, but suppose there is a person who within a single thought moment is able to know all the various expedient methods of the living beings in countless world systems in the East that is, all the ways to teach and transform living beings. He desires to know them in limitless and numberless world systems. In succession, extend this unit, it reaches to a tenth person. In the south, west, and north, the four intermediaries above and below, it is also like this. There is a person like this in each of the ten directions. Sutra the limits of the various expedient methods of these living beings in the ten directions can be known, but no one is able to know the limit of the merit and virtue and good rules of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. He brings forth the mind of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi only for the sake of knowing the various expedient methods of the living beings in those world systems. It is in order to exhaustively know the various expedient methods of all living beings in all world systems. And speaking extensively, it is because he desires to exhaustively know the net of all expedient methods that he brings forth the mind 
Fuanu Tara Samyak Sambudi. Commentary The limits of the various expedient methods of these living beings in the 10 directions can be known. You can know how much their limits are, but no one is able to know the limit of the merit and virtue and good rules of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Nutara Samyak Sambodhi, the unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment. There isn't any person who can know their limit. Why is this? What is the reason for this? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. The Bodhisattva has no fixed standard. He brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. He brings forth the mind for the unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment. Only for the sake knowing the various expedient methods of the living beings in those world systems. It is solely for the sake of knowing the various expedient methods of all living beings in all world systems. It is in order to exhaustively know the various expedient methods of all living beings in all world systems. And, speaking extensively, it is because he desires to exhaustively know the net of all expedient methods that he brings for the mind for Nusara Samyak Sambodhi. The number of people who are fasting has increased to eight. Why does one want to fast? It is because one prays that the world will be peaceful and harmonious, or perhaps that our Buddhimanda will be successfully completed. When praying for world peace and the successful completion of the Buddhimanda, you have a sincere heart. So don't fear hunger. You want to fulfill the power of our vows and fasting is just cultivating concentration. If you don't have greed, you are able to have concentration power. And if you have concentration power, you can have a response. The response and the way will intertwine. If you have a response, it is certain that Buddhas and cultivating concentration power. You don't want to think about whether or not you have eaten anything. Forget about it. Become empty. Make everything empty. Make everything non-existent. At that time, the originally existent treasure of great light will manifest. So, during the time one is fasting, the most important thing is to not give rise to fire. You shouldn't get angry. If you get angry, you will burn up all your merit and virtue. You want to have practice until you don't have the slightest bit of anger. This is just the perfection of your application of effort. Be patient. If you go along with your greedy habits, they will never end. If you go along with your heart of anger, it will not stop. If you go along with your heart of stupidity, it too will not stop. Fasting is just understanding the mind and seeing the nature. It is a way to get rid of thoughts of desire. Because one's thoughts of desire come, become less and less each day. These are just some of the good points of fasting. Therefore, each person who is fasting should not have any fire in his or her self-nature. You don't want to have even the slightest bit of fire. Fundamentally, our bodies have a lot of fire. If your mind continuously gives rise to fire, if your mind continuously gives rise to fire, then your fire becomes too great. So at all times and all patience, cultivate the practice of giving. Cultivate the practice of upholding morality and cultivate the practice of Bible. Now, those who have fasted for 18 days have already finished, but there still are those of you who are going to fast for 36 days who have not yet finished. Now, you should not drink too much water. Drinking too much water is useless. At the very most, you should drink no more than one cup each day. This is melting your indestructible body of Vira and is no easy feat. Sutra, disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, suppose there is a person who in a single thought moment is able to know the various different kinds of minds of 
living beings in countless world systems in the East. Commentary Jama Wisdom again calls out, disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, he says, let's not talk about the previous analogy, we will bring up another analogy. Suppose there is a person, basically there isn't such a person, but let us hypothetically suppose there is a, such a person who in a single thought moment is able to know the various different kinds of minds of all living beings in countless world systems in the East. World systems without number or measure. All living beings' minds are different, yet within a single thought moment, he can know them all. 